Hi there folks, it's me, Aaron, Professor Thorgy. As you'll notice, this video is starting off a little bit different than most of mine. There's no goofy gags, no skit to start things off, because sadly this is a bit more of a serious video, because the president of Nintendo, Satoru Iwata, has passed away, and that of course would be sad at any moment in time, but the man was only 55 years old. It's not one of those situations where you can look back and go, well, he lived a long, healthy life. Unfortunately, he did pass away early, which makes it all the more painful. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I was getting a little bit emotional before recording this, uh, but it is, one thing is true about the passing of someone, no matter at what age it happens, and that is, it is important to look back at their life, at what they accomplished, and celebrate what they've done. And here on Professor Thorgy, I've always talked about how this video, this channel, is meant to be all about a celebration of geekery. It is meant to be a celebration of all those things that we are a fan of, whether it be comic books, movies, or video games. And Satoru Iwata provided numerous video games that have some of the most die-hard fandoms out there. I was looking down the list of all the games that he worked on, all the games that he had a credit on, and in the past 10 years, he's had an executive producer credit on almost everything that Nintendo has put out. And a lot of people might think, oh, well, executive producer just means that you're one of the guys at the top. You don't really do anything. He still had an influence on these games. He still worked on them in one way, shape, or form, even if it was just approving these things to go forward. So, I mean, looking at that alone is impressive, but let's go back to his early days. If you go back and look at some of the earliest stuff that he did in his career, two things become very clear. The first off being that he helped to shape the future of video games with the influence he made early on. And the other thing is that Satoru Iwata was a badass, okay? Seriously. I don't think you guys understand what this guy did. That guy programmed Earthbound, one of the most influential games of its time. A game that was so far ahead of its generation. He programmed that from the ground up. This wasn't like he came by and like, okay, yeah, we got most of the stuff just laid out. We just need to put all the pieces together. No, that thing was just a pile of garbage. And he came by and was like, I'm going to make a masterpiece out of this. And that's what he did. The dude was a magician when it came to technology. Pokemon, one of my favorite video game franchises of all time. In fact, I'm not kidding you guys, this is serious. If it weren't for the fact that this week was San Diego Comic-Con, I was going to make this upcoming week Pokemon week on my channel. I really was, because Pokemon is coming out later this week, and I was like, okay, I got all these shows planned, great, awesome, and then I remember that it was San Diego Comic Con, I was like, ah, crap, I gotta push that back. So that's how much of a fan I am of that franchise, and my favorite game in that franchise was Gold and Silver. In fact, I am currently even playing through my very first Nuzlocke ever on Soul Silver, and uh, don't play through Nuzlocke's kids, it will break your heart. But one of the reasons why I love that so much is because in that game, as soon as you finish the Elite Four, as soon as you conquer everything there is to conquer in Johto, you then get to travel back to Kanto, to the very first Pokemon game. You get to go back there, challenge all the gym leaders again, get to do all that, and it was like, oh my gosh, how did they come up with the technology for that? You know how they came up with the technology for that? Satari Wada. That's how they did. When Game Freak Studios finished up Gold and Silver, they presented it with just Johto, and he was like, we can do better. And he invented the technology himself to compress that file down enough that they could put in that second game. Holy cow. That's amazing to me. And that's not even where all of his Pokemon adventures end, alright? Pokemon Stadium. The very first time that we were able to see Pokemon on our TV screens was a game that was just the battles. That's all it was. You picked out your Pokemon, and then they fought each other. So in other words, the battle programming was probably the most important part of it. In fact, I'd say it was probably 90% of that game. He programmed in the battle programming in a week by himself from memory. No references at all. He just knew the code and programmed it right in there. Holy cow. Think about that the next time that you're in a math class and you're like, oh, jeez, when am I going to need to know math? Satori Wada never said that, all right? And he programmed that in, like, at roughly the same age that I am now. Like, he was only a few years older than I am now. It took me a week to assemble this cabinet here, and I still don't think I did it right. That's not all that I love about this guy. Just think about all that he's contributed to just the tone of video games. Think about how 
all the video games out there right now are just basically in a battle to see who can be more mature and serious and grizzled. And think about how every E3 coverage you've seen is nothing but guys who have no business staying in front of a podium, getting in front of a podium going, well, with our new technology, we're going to have it be so that you can shoot even more monsters and you'll be able to look at your system in a whole new light. Think about that and then think about the E3 coverage from Nintendo. Think about how much they are like, no, we're the people who make fun games and we are embracing fun. And you know something? I love fun. I do. I love fun so much. And I guarantee you, at least some of you people out there love fun too. I know you do. Don't deny it. Satari Wada was a guy who looked at the face of gaming and what gaming was becoming and he went, no, we're going to continue to be fun. We're going to continue to be a company that everyone can enjoy, that reaches out to every group out there. And I cannot thank him enough for that. And I know he wasn't the only one Nintendo was doing that. Reggie, I give you credit too, but holy cow, I know that part of that was his influence. And for all those people out there who just want to have fun with their games and don't want to just always be in a grizzled, a post-apocalyptic wasteland, I thank you for giving us that oasis out there. So yeah, as I said, it is a sad time right now. It is a time to mourn. It is a time to reflect back on all the things that he has done. But it is also a time to remember, this guy contributed a lot to what makes us geeks, to what makes us passionate about things from the world of pop culture. He influenced that so much. And for that, he will always have our respects. So yeah, to Satoru Iwata, I just want to say thank you and rest in peace. And to anybody out there watching, it is a time to feel sad, it is a time to mourn, but it's also a time to think back on all that he accomplished, of all the great things that he did. And I can't think of a better way to honor his memory than to look around your house and see if you own one of his games. And if you do, just pick it up and play it tonight. Just enjoy yourself. Take some time off. You've earned it. Take some time off and play one of his games. I can't think of a better way to honor his memory than to just spend the evening having fun. Thanks, everyone.